<laughs> Lad, yeah. you would. I don't. I, I think I've lost it, but I was tapping one of the holes through. Um, one of these, or I can't remember what I was doing, and the tripod landed on me, and he smashed into me. And I think that video's gone. I can't even remember what I filmed when I did it. If I'm honest. <laughs> Oh, I was hoping I could have kept it because all you would have seen is the camera coming towards my head and bashing off my head. Anyway, I think it was when I was doing his initials. He he wants his initials on this one. Um, so I've put the initials on. And, um, oh, it would have been a corker. Anyway, um, so his initials are done. All the straps are done. Um, what we'll do now is... Um, Look at sorting the edge out. Um, okay. Right, so edges. What I always use to do mine is, excuse me a second while I find a brush. Where have you gone, your bleeder? That's not it, that's not. Ah, there we go. You get funny with these type of things, you get used to just using the same, um, you know, type of brush. And anyway, so what we'll do is we'll just, this is the same colour, the little bit that I mixed, um, as the sheath itself first. So what I'll do is I'll clip that out of the way a minute. I'll just go over it with this first. And then we'll go over with the with the edge die. Um, I just think this will give a. Well, it, I, I know it it just gives a better. When you just do it with just the edge die or with bare leather underneath, um, if that wears away, which it will do eventually, you're just going to have. Um, bare leather exposed basically um, but by doing it like this it's a longer procedure but all these things matter to me um, you know if that comes off or when your edge die, uh, die comes off you know you've got just a natural colour under the leather anyway nice and burnished so as for the edges the same as I said with the door but I can't remember whether that was on the video that I um, that the camera decided to want to knock me out but uh, with the brush it's the same type of principle you don't want to be fannying about and um, you know t take it easy but um, it's better to do long consistent um, rather than just being really careful you'll find you'll, you'll just mess it up if you um, just gently it's, it's, it's with an even pressure you'll find that it just goes on a dream really um, I find the slower I'll go with this brush and the more careful I try and be me personally the more mistakes I'll make um, once you get used to doing it um, like that you, you'll understand what I mean get yourself a bit of scrap leather and try it try just to put in the brush on and just gently quite quickly just following your line and you'll find you'll get a very very neat edge right we'll just do these little bits here as well what you want to do as well is when you apply the die if you've got to go really close to something like this edge here put your brush a couple of millimeters away from that edge don't put the brush on the edge a couple of millimeters away from it and just touch it with the brush and what will happen is as the the leather absorbs the dye it will pull it to that edge so you won't go over basically I hope that makes sense um, as the leather uh, absorbs the dye it will always run out just a little bit more than it needs to so if you go just off the edge when you when you come to push the brush on it will run up to that edge perfectly anyway it's just getting to know roughly whereabouts to put the brush so it runs up just at the right point um, again that comes with practice you know if you've got like a like down there a big scrap tool which I you know I have obviously with for the sheer amount of leather work I do um, you know there's plenty there and you'll have plenty of scrap um, to practice on and obviously always practice on that first um, 
I'm just going to run over this edge as well again a bit. Okay. I'll just give that another little burnish. That'll have a bit of a tan coat on it anyway. But uh, as I say, I prefer that when I'm going around corners and around edges. Um, if I've got to go up against something that's a 90 degree angle or you know when it's cut out there like that um, I'll use the little end off the little burnishing tool and just run away and then you can get right up to there as well you know because I see a lot of leather goods and that, that that's not been done um, and I think it's because they're struggling to get to get to it to be honest rather than because they don't want to or they don't know how to um, but this tool is great for that getting up into square 90 degree edges you can use the gap in the tool get right up and just pull it out and you'll have like that all your edges are done properly it's another little tip for you, for you hope it helps right so now as with all I do whenever I've used my brush as soon as I've finished into the water straight away if you always just pull away from it you'll always keep that brush nice like that as well which is perfect for getting into um, for those type of edges where I was on about where you let the dye run out a little bit you want it nice and sharp and crisp like that on the edge um, right now edge coat if you use this edge coat whatever you do don't shake the bottle it's not designed to be sh to be shaken. It'll even state it on the bottle. It says, um, "Never shake." But uh, you know, I have shook it and I've tried it, and it does make a difference. Um, the consistency is not the same. Just leave it all settling the bottom and just dip your brush in. Um, now, like I say, I'm, I'm using this this time. It, it, a lot of times I use this edge doy, but because people can't, it's not as easy to get hold of anymore because they discontinued it. Um, I'll, uh, I do use this, um, but uh, most times I use the edge doy. Uh, okay, it's looking at the camera, not looking what I'm doing. Okay. Not too much on the edge, <laughs> or it'll drip off, or on your sheath. Um, here we go again. Like I say, same with this, you know. When you're doing the middle, don't be too shy. When you come to the edges, oh, I wish I could get this to pick up to show you what I mean. It's just an even, consistent stroke, rather than slowly trying to paint it on. Because you don't want no run over with this. It's, you definitely don't want that. See, I'm rushing the procedure here. I know what I forgot to do. <sighs> Thinking about getting all this into camera for you a lot, but it don't matter because I can go over this again now. But I'm going to do the rest of it before we, before I do this. I'll have to just go over it with this on here. And we'll do that line in the centre. Cause like the welt the same colour. As you can see, I think. There we go. Right. When I've gone over with the normal edge of dye, God, it must have knocked me about that bang on my head. <laughs> um, this is where I'll, I'll burnish with the normal edge dye and then apply that edge coat um, or edge dye, sorry, on my sheath. But when I've done it, no, you know, with just a normal whatever colour you've, you've used for that particular sheath, right. Normally I wouldn't suggest going over this. It doesn't make a difference, but it just means you've got to do it again. It needs doing. It's not something I'm going to leave out for camera or not. So, okay, I just don't really like burnishing on top of this stuff. Okay, there we go. Get them edges nice and crisp. Get that end all rounded, neat. Okay, we're up, start again. 
flower nappy. Just a little bit more with my own little edge burnishing tool. If you use a lot of exotic hardwoods or anything, you've got any bits like this over, keep them. Polish them up with more chrome mesh. They're absolutely fantastic. You know, this is a... To be honest, this is left out an awful lot with some people um, who do the leather work, you know. I know this burnishing's a bit of a nightmare and it's time consuming and all the rest of it, but it gives you your sheaths and your items a much more professional finish. And it's worth just putting that bit of extra effort in. I mean, no matter what you do in North, I think that that um, applies to, you know, always give it your all no matter what you do. Um, at the end of the day, when pe people are paying good money for items that you've made, I mean, all these little things make a difference and people do pick up on them. At the end of the day, one of the reasons why I started to get into this leather work was I got sick of buying knives and leather stuff and the leather work was atrocious and uh, you know, me being the way I am I decided to have a go and uh, it, it, it went from there really. But uh, that was the reason what started me off. That and, uh, and another leather worker telling me that I weren't in his, league, in his league, that really got to me and pushed me to make sure I would, I'd, I'd be better than him. But that's another story. And, um, you know, I think when you you buy these items and you get them home and you, you get that deflated, disappointed feeling, there's nothing like that. And I know deep down in my heart what I want to buy and what it should be like for the amount of money I've paid. So at the end of the day, I know what I'd be happy with and I make sure that anything that people buy off me, I apply that logic to my stuff. And if I look at it and I don't think that I'd be happy with this for any reason or I'd, I'd find a bit that I wouldn't be happy with for any reason, it goes in the bin and I'll start again. And uh, anybody who knows me, that's the truth. I've scrapped a complete sheath because the sti a stitch has been out of place. Um, because at the end of the day, that person has paid good money for it and it's not going to leave my shop unless it's perfect. Absolutely perfect. Everything is perfect. If it's not perfect, it gets done again. I'll start again. Um... That's enough of me ranting, and I'll continue finishing these. Uh, it just gets to me sometimes when, you know, people, you know, ask a lot of money for stuff, and you know, and so you know, people like me and a lot of people out there, they ain't got a lot of money, and they, you know, they pay, you know, they probably go without stuff to buy these things because they're luxuries, and uh, and they get them, and then and they're not as they should be. They soul destroying. It'll never happen with more stuff, not as long as I breathe air anyway. Right. Okay. Let me get these bits done here. Okay. Now you can't, if you use this edge coat, you can't really use that thing what I told you about about it running up to the edge with this. It doesn't leak in like a normal dye wheel, like an, uh, a pro oil dye wheel. So you have to go right up to the edge with this stuff, and you have to be, you know, just be careful, you know, because you don't want to be running over with it. It'll ruin all your hard work. Okay, right. So that's the edges all burnished. Nice, slick, and as they should be. Um, I don't know whether I can get it to. You know, you've got that nice chamfer down the side, which is all blended into your edge. You want it nice and slick like that, and you know, like you've real put some back work into it, you know, because that's what you need to do before to prep it like that in the first place to then apply these and then just that little bit of burnishing. You want to get this all right before you do them last couple of steps. Um, anyway, so that's that done. All this needs now um, is assembling and the finishes putting on and that's another one out the door. Um, I can't remember where this one's going to. Um, somewhere in England, this one. Um, and then it's time to start on the next one. I've had a, another load come in, so I'm just hoping I'll get a chance to do the knives as well. I've, I've, um, 
the kitchen knife I was working on and the the other little knife I was working on I cleaned up yesterday. <laughs> People was to see me yesterday. I was standing in the workshop in my boxer shorts with my um, leather apron on because I was so hot and uh, grinding away. If anybody was to have looked in there, must have thought I was a nutcase. Right, the battery's about to go on this camera, so. Um, I'll leave it there guys, uh, when this is all done and it's had all the finishes put on it and everything I'll either take a couple of pictures or not or um, I'll see how it goes Anyway, I hope you enjoyed these few little videos Take care of yourself and uh, I'll see you on the next one Lee